now we're getting somewhere. There it is. There it is. Now this is called the Presidential Gallery, so it makes me think that there must be a story to more than just that one. And that one is called The Rock. Now this one is called The Sacred Cow. And they have a picture of FDR. Now this is actually called The Sacred Cow. In you go. And the reason they have this here is because FDR was the first president to actually fly while in office. And it says that he took this sacred cow to the Yalta Conference in 1945. So let's go take a walk through. Here we go. Looks like they have it all glassed in. It's very small in here, but you can see the cockpit right there. That's the kitchen. And you can see some cots in here. Here's a cot where they can sleep. Chairs. Here you can see the luggage. Look at that. That would have been a sitting card table type area. And another cot and kind of lounging area. Now this is really tight, but we're getting pretty close to where his office is. And you can actually see right in here, that would have been his office. And they actually had a little lift or elevator type thing to get him in here. You can see the presidential seal on the, the desk. Pretty cool. Now if you look in there, that's actually his office. You can see his love of the Navy, especially. That would have been his, uh, his work area. And then if you look over in here, it's another kind of lounge area and everything, but that's where they actually would kind of elevator him up here. And we're out of here. FDR's airplane. Pretty cool. There you can see the Independence over there. Now the Independence, I believe, was Harry Truman's airplane, if I'm not mistaken. We'll have to see when we get over here. Wow. Yeah, so it says the Independence was retired in 1953 after six years of service. So that would have been Truman's era. Let's go take a walk through that. Presidential playing cards. There's the kitchen. All right. There's the presidential seal right there on the table. So this would have been Truman's little quarters. You can actually see he's got a map up here. The U.S. And that's the very back. So that probably would have been his bathroom and everything back here. Pretty cool. All right, let's go see the JFK plane. I think that's next. And it's that one right there. Well, here it is. Oh. Oh, yeah. So right here it says this was actually used by uh, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, George W. Bush, and Clinton. Or at least this model has. And this was the one. This was the one that brought Kennedy home. You can actually see it right here. We are almost here, almost inside. Who couldn't remember seeing Johnson getting sworn in on this? We're yep. on it. And it said that Kennedy actually had these commissioned in 1962. There's the little kitchen. 
all the seeds. And there's a bunch of bench seating. Now here it says Kennedy's conference room is stateroom were just ahead and then Nixon changed it to wanting the presidential quarters a little bit closer so these were actually moved to for Nixon's request. Is this the last one? Here we go we're making our way around the plane you can see that little fox emblem up there. And then here you can see that is where President Johnson was sworn in. Sorry if it's not totally stable, guys. I'm trying to, it's extremely, really complicated to get through here. It's extremely tight quarters, so I'm actually using my left hand to vlog right now. I never do. Gosh. That famous picture of him being sworn in, it would have happened on this plane. On this plane. Holy moly. Is that real enough for you? Now here it says the aircraft crew did not want to bring the fallen president's casket back to Washington DC in the cargo hold. This wall shown in the photo was cut so the casket could be placed in the aft cabin. Two rows of seats were removed and President Kennedy's casket was placed in here. Mrs. Kennedy sat in the seat opposite the casket part of the galley is today. Wow. So it would have been inside there. There's the presidential seal. Now this is about the size. <coughs> Obviously, they're not as internally embellished. It's just all passive. So President Kennedy's body would have literally been transported right on the other side of these windows. They would have removed the seats, and he would have been transported there as to not be considered cargo. And so that plane up above is actually called the Ladybird Special. And that is a plane that President Johnson, for the most part, used to transport him and his family while he was in office. Now this one over here is actually called the Columbine 3. And the Columbine 3 was the aircraft that was, well, you can see it right here. It was used by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. First Lady Mamie Eisenhower christening the Columbine 3 with a flask of water from Colorado. And it says here that the most important trip this took was when it took Eisenhower to the leadership conference in Switzerland against the Soviet leadership. Let's go take a look. All right, here we go. Anybody want coffee? telephones that said they could use to talk to the flight crew. And then I would guess back here would be the Eisenhower suite. Hold on, that is. All right, good time. Now there's a couple more planes over there I'd like to read up on. 
Now this they sometimes call the Air Force One and a Half, and it says that it was uh, it was used by Nixon, Ford, Carter, and Ronald Reagan a number of times, although it never served as the primary presidential aircraft. Now this is a de Havilland Mosquito, and what they said was that um, they were originally painted this color, but then right before they went into uh, for D-Day, almost overnight they painted them all uh, black and white to kind of blend in, and you can actually see the mosquito markings up here on the side of the plane. All right, I think we're gonna get out of here. We'll see a few things on our way out, but we'll save World War II for another time, another trip, and another visit. And here you can see some people inside the uh, virtual reality transporter. Probably a pretty fun experience. I think I did it when I was younger. I just know you guys wouldn't be able to see anything, so. And that was pretty fun. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, there's just absolutely no way you could make, nobody could, nobody could make their way through all this vlogging in one day. Four buildings, it really should be broken up into four or six vlogs. This is actually pretty cool. I want to show this on the way out. They have different eras of flight gear. And then right in here, you might see right ahead of me, is a little uh, kind of memorial and a little museum of stuff from Bob Hope. See, there's his stuff from Vietnam. See his name on all of it. Bob Hope Christmas. And then over here, it says Berlin, Korea aircraft stuff. That's pretty cool. And then over here, this is World War II mementos. Programs from the shows. Pretty cool. Now let's go over there and see his jacket. There he is. And here's his award for most honored entertainer. <laughs> and there he is entertaining the troops. And then right there, that his kind of funny cargo vest there. Scorecards, dispensary, golf tips, road maps. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, Bob Hope. And one of his Emmys. And you can see over here, a letter of appreciation from Richard Nixon. In the great words of Mel Allen, how about that? Thanks for the memories, Bob. 50 years of hope. And we are out of here. I don't know why they're selling uh, Area 51 stuff in here, but so be it. Hope you guys enjoyed this brief, very brief tour of the United States Air Force Museum. What a great time, I can't recommend it enough. Well, the one thing that I didn't show you guys today, and I'll save that for another time, and it's mainly because I didn't know where it was, they have a John F. Kennedy Eternal Flame. So we'll see that next time. I hope you won't hold that against me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Goodbye.